I'm here with Dr. Amato to do a problem on acid base. Come around, I'm gonna show you a really good question for the DAT exam. Don't worry about the numbers not being nice. So if you wanna do this with a calculator, you could. On the DAT exam, the numbers will be much, much nicer and on the DAT destroyer, much, much easier to work with. I give you lactic acid. If you remember lactic acid, we see that in muscle fatigue. It's produced in the body and if you remember, it goes to the liver and reconverted back into glucose via gluconeogenesis. At any rate, this lactic acid, C3H5OH3, um, notice in organic chemistry, we were write it as C3H6O3, but whenever they put the, o, the H on the outside, that just tells you that's the H that's gonna come off. And I say to you, it's 5% ionized in a 0.35 molar solution. And I want you to find the Ka for this. Well, the first thing that you would do on any reaction is to always write the expression for the reaction. So we're gonna take the C3H5O3H and we put it in water. We will always put it in water in general chemistry. That will always be the assumed solvent unless otherwise noted. Since it's gonna give off an H, we end up getting H3O plus plus C3H5O3 minus. So we get hydronium ions and lactate produced. Next move is write the Ka, which is the products divided by the reactants, and we don't use the water. Now, what does 5% mean? 5% means that 5% of this is what broke up. So if you multiply 0 0.05 times 0.35, you get 0175 molar. That's how much has been broken up. Since this is a one-to-one -one ratio, that means they're equal in concentration and therefore they're both equal to 0175 molar. Now we put it into the Ka. The Ka is the hydronium times the lactate divided by the total concentration, which is 0.35, and we know a little bit broke up. Normally we can omit the small amount that is ionized. But I decided to keep this in here because the numbers were pretty easy to work with. When you did it on the calculator, if that would make you feel good, you would get around 9.4 to the minus fourth. So the numbers on the dial will be a little more friendly. So the Ka is 9.4 to the minus four. And finally, the Ka times the Kb is equal to one to the minus 14th. In order to find the Kb, you just plug the numbers in so it's one to the minus 14th divided by the Ka of 9.4 to the minus fourth, and we get 1.1 to the minus 11th. Let's do one final problem that I did for you on the board. And what I did is the pKa of lactic acid was found to be 3.9. And I say that the Ka of, so this is lactic acid, lactic acid, and this will be pyruvic acid. And that Ka would be 2.5. And I ask you why? Why would the Ka, the pKa be lower? Meaning the pyruvic acid is more acidic than lactic acid. Well, if you remember in organic chemistry, the three famous words that I teach my students, examine the anion. So as you can see, when you examine the anion, you not only got resonance, but there is a little tiny bit of an inductive effect helping to stabilize the anion with the OH group, but not tremendous. If you remember, the normal pKa of a carboxy acid is around five. Here it's around four. So there was somewhat of an inductive effect, but a carbonyl group is much more electron withdrawing than an OH group, and it would have a greater inductive effect. So the inductive effect is gonna to help to withdraw electron densities, density off of this oxygen. So therefore, the anion of the pyruvic acid called the pyruvate anion would be more stabilized. It's got resonance, just like lactate, but it also has a greater inductive effect. And therefore, that inductive effect would account for the lower pKa value. I hope this gives you a good insight into 
a little bit of acid-base chemistry that you're going to see on the DAT exam. Try all the problems in this dryer. Make sure you can do them. If you've got any other questions, hit me up on the study group on Facebook. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.